Shane Oom sa Mila Buikas Okri is the uh, shortest retirement statement that I can remember, and it's from Michael Darren McCauley. Um, that's all from me. Thanks so much from the bottom of my heart. That's our uh, non literal translation there. Eight All Ireland medals, 10 Leinster titles, two All Stars, and the Footballer of the Year in 2013. He put together an absolutely sensational career. And from reading Bernard Brogan's book and from hearing the interviews, kind of uh, obviously somebody who was a leader in the group in terms of the uh, approach to training sessions, leading mindfulness sessions. That was one of the um, things that came across even when he knew he wasn't going to be in the team. That group of those players who kept with the team to keep driving the standards on, when it looked like you kind of felt on that the team might get caught in recent seasons, it never happened. And I actually think that one of the reasons why it never happened is because players stayed on an extra year when they weren't going to get minutes. Like, I don't, I don't know how many minutes he got this year. It could be zero. It could be, it could be nearly zero for Bernard Brogan in terms of the, the big competitive matches that mattered in his last couple of years as well. And uh, they kept going, they kept showing up, and they kept driving standards. And that's the key thing that brings them to a whole other level compared to every other team in the country when you have somebody who is a former footballer of the year who is maybe not starting every game and, and driving standards on. Uh, I think that maybe it just became apparent near the end of the season that he wasn't going to be in the starting team. I think maybe early on there was definitely a sense this season that he could definitely contribute from the start. There's always uh, a place for him, I think, off the bench, even in that Dublin squad over the last year because of the athlete that he is and how in brilliant shape he kept himself down through the years. Like There are so many moments for him post-2013 as well where he'll kind of be remembered where... I guess he, his position was always the one that was under a little bit of threat, where there was always the sense that, oh, let's just push James McCarthy into midfield to partner Brian Fenton post-2015. And it seemed that Jim Gavin especially resisted that for so long. And, of course, that stands to James McCarthy being a brilliant half-back. But I think the main reason for that was that Michael Darren McCauley was a brilliant midfielder. And, of course, he was playing alongside possibly the best midfielder to ever lace a pair of Gaelic football boots of Not Brian Fenton. Start, though, yeah. But yeah, exactly. And I, I think for that reason, he's going to be so fondly remembered. Like there's no nothing about him that you could say uh, he was underrated or uh, underappreciated in any way, because I'm sure you'll see over the next couple of hours, the Dublin fans and the tributes will be glowing towards him. Because as a guy off the pitch as well, like we've had him in studio a couple of times, he's such a down to earth fella and the work that he does uh, in his own professional life as well is absolutely brilliant. And uh, he'll continue to do that and he'll continue to contribute to sport in Dublin City in a really meaningful way over the next little while. Yeah. And society beyond that's the, the bit you yeah. kind of for you know like uh, you can't the, the entire team isn't like uh, him but certainly if he is one of the leaders of your team and he's putting his head above the parapet and trying to make a difference to the community that he's in on a daily basis and using the fame of being one of the most famous footballers in the country to help with that uh, as a force for good you know that's um, that's really all you can ask for from um, the, the people who are representing their county. So also unbelievable competitive instinct, like Narky, like in, in key moments was there getting in people's faces and starting fights and, and not backing, not taking a step backwards, which again is an aspect of that Dublin team that sometimes we don't talk about, but it comes from the tone setters, you know, James McCarthy was hard and quiet and wouldn't really start stuff, but Michael Darrow would happily um, start some things along the way if they needed to be started. Oh, well, he wouldn't take a backward step, that's for sure. I think this is an immediate loss, like uh, for all the reasons that you talk about there, for the personality that he is, and undoubtedly driving standards on in training. But like, as I say, he keeps himself in such good shape. I think there's a material loss here to, to not having him around the squad uh, as a player. Like maybe you only really notice it in the league when the standards are a little bit less when, when he's not around in the league or the early stages of the championship. But no, I think that, like, uh, as I say, if you're pulling James McCarthy and he's now your midfielder alongside Fenton for the foreseeable future, what the, the demands that places on your defence? Like this is this is an immediate loss, I think. So he, he is going to be missed. And um, obviously, but, well, have you got two Paddy Andrews? Have you, have you got more than two retirements so far um, in in the Dublin setup? I, I think this is probably just the second one. So uh, retirement season rages on. Well, Paddy Andrews is going to join us on the show tomorrow. Uh, Adrian's mm -hmm. going to be in uh, as well. And that's going to be a, a chat with him about his career with Dublin. I'm looking forward to hearing that because, again, one of those characters we don't know that much about, but actually any time you do get those little glimpses of it, um, you, you kind of see that uh, there's a lot of interesting things to talk about with him. So uh, that's at 8 o'clock tomorrow.